Right, this is the uh, original GSO uh, focuser that I put the lakeside focuser uh, onto previously in my other video that you may have seen. Uh, what I was finding was, I've only imaged with it a few times, I did the Moon which was perfect, um, I did Jupiter and I did a Galaxy with it. But what I've been finding lately is that uh, when I've gone back to this scope now with this focuser on, is that um, it has, it was doing some funny things in Focus Max the other day, it was kind of slipping and not giving, it, the motors were moving but um, the finder the actual um, draw tube was not moving so what I decided to do was buy uh, the this 1.5 inch model draw tube um, feather touch focuser which was supposed to be one of the best out there the only thing that gets me is actually the price I can't believe it was sort of with the adapter for this 8 inch um, GSO RC comes in at sort of just under 400 pounds I mean god 400 pounds that was sort of price I used to um, spend on, a, on an ED doublet it was around £400 not just on a, on a sort of focuser but anyway so what I've got to do today is actually remove the uh, the lakeside from this one and then actually fit it to the to the feather touch one and then uh, put it back onto the uh, scope so when you buy this in a kit uh, well I bought this from Altair Astro and you actually get the, the focuser and then you get the adapter also that you need uh, to fit the 8 inch GSO uh, RC scope um, and what you'll find is that this actually goes straight onto the Titans um, and then you screw that end onto the back of your scope now when it came initially it just has um, three uh, built in um, grub screws that you can use to tighten it onto onto the uh, feather touch focuser but with mine actually came with three um, thumb screws as well so what I'm first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the grub screws out and replace them with the thumb screws um, quite useful I suppose if you want to actually change the uh, rotate the focuser on, on the back and then just tighten up the three thumb screws at the end right so I've done that now I've removed the three small grub screws uh, with nail and key and just added on the three um, thumb screws onto the adapter and then what we do is we just slot in the adapter until it snaps into place and probably I'll just roughly centre that up with the top screw the moment anyway and just tighten that up so that's the adapter on Oops, sorry a bit close so that's the adapter on the three big thumb screws on the outside next job I'm just going to really unscrew the bottom of the lake side off attached via this tension screw here and these washers that I put in previously you might remember if you saw the other video that I put various uh, washers and things on here in order to make it become flat as this one had a quite a curved bottom to the focuser now I'm hoping that this uh, lakeside bracket is going to fit the uh, feather touch and I won't have to order a new one but we'll find out. Right so now I've managed to take the uh, this piece off. We've got the pin of the focuser left Oops. and here's the motor in one piece taken off. I managed to find the uh, original focusing knob so I'm just going to put that back on and then we'll move on to putting the focuser onto the new right so here's the uh, GSO focuser with the knob back on 
and here we go with the feather touch. Now the first thing to do is to take off the single speed side and there's the uh, you just see the allen key hole there so we're just going to put an allen, put an allen key hole in there when we find the right one first thing I've noticed straight away we're taking the single speed off look how big that pin is in there compared to the small hole that you get in this coupler that was made for uh, standard focuses gonna have to either get a different coupler order a different one from Lakeside focuses or I'm gonna have to drill it out okay this is the finished focuser I've jumped a few steps here because I did actually didn't buy one in the end, didn't buy a new one, I just drilled out the uh, current one I'd got. So what I've actually done was, the coupler in here, I drilled it out with a normal sort of metal uh, drill bit. It's quite soft metal on this coupler. Um, the marks along the middle of where it was being held in the workbench. Just drilled that out and then attached it. And the same on the bottom bracket, this bracket was actually made for a Mead 127 with the three holes there. What I've actually done is I've actually drilled a hole through it to match up with the feather touch hole on the bottom there. And then all I've done is I've put a rubber washer, a small metal bracket, and then tightened that up. And that's really tight now. Um, and that's how I've added that motor focuser to the feather touch. Now we've just got to attach it to the telescope and go out to the observatory and test it out. And that's where I'm going to go now. Okay, here we are on the back of the scope. I've basically screwed the adapter onto the back of the extension tube on the back of the scope. Uh, I've just turned that and turned that until it tightened up manually. And then I've rotated the focuser and tightened the three thumb screws and I've connected the serial cable and, uh, and then if I go in and out you will see the movement there you go. That seems to work quite nicely. Now I just have to calibrate it with the software and set the minimum and maximum values.